What's going on? It is December 7th, 2023. Lots of big news in Padres baseball. You're listening to the Friars Side Chat. Special offseason edition number three. Number three. And the biggest one so far. Yeah. Like really, really big. Really big. All things new. Yeah, we're talking Soto Trade. We're talking filling out the roster with free agents. And new manager. Yeah. Big. Big, big stuff. All big. Let's, Let's start with the biggest. Get into it. Soto to the Yankees. Let's also not forget Trent Grisham was a part of this deal. I feel like all the... <laughs> if you look at any post on social media, it's like, oh, what? Trent well, Grisham? It, it happened last time. Know. Soto comes to the Padres. Oh, Who yeah, else? Josh Bell. Josh Bell? Oh, he was all sure. pissed about it, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, kind he, of he more of a gripe than Trent does. Yeah. But we, we will miss Trent. Trent uh, was... He's a gold glove outfielder, man. Gold glove outfield. Well, Good tag. dude. Yeah. But... You know, by the same time, <laughs> sub Mendoza line for what, like three years or something. Problem is, you can hit tough, get a little thump, but when you're hitting one, 180 or 190, it's hard to keep you in the starting lineup. But, anyways, so we, we already know enough about Soto, we know enough about Grisham. Let's talk about who the Padres got in return. From who, Vince? People don't know. I'm just kidding. The Yankees. Uh, this has been a long time coming, yeah. and it was kind of like, are they going to do it? There was one stall out where they're like, the Padres asking price is too high. And to Prello's credit, it sounds like he didn't budge. He right. got two of their non-negotiables from the go mm. to be in this trade. So, Vince, break down yep. the hall. Okay. So we'll start with probably the centerpiece of the deal. That would be Michael King, 28-year-old right-handed pitcher. Bam. He... um. Yeah. Mostly was a relief pitcher for the Yankees. His best year was 2022. He uh, had a one whip, which is excellent, by the way. Uh, 11.6 Ks per nine and a 2.29 ERA. And that, so that was out of the bullpen in 2022. So he was one of the best relievers in the game. Yeah. 2022. That was a 27-year. And then uh, last year, 2023, he uh, pitched some of the bullpen but made nine starts for the Yankees. And in those starts, 2.23 ERA. 51 Ks over 40 and one-third innings pitched. Are we looking at Nick Martinez 2.0? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's like the first thing I saw. And I was like, oh, he splits time, wants to be a starter. Does he get a shot? It sure seems like it. He'll get he'll get his shot here. I mean, three empty spots. Yeah. Three. Yeah. And I love that he's 28. Yeah. He's 28. He's within the prime years, 27 to 32. Mm-hmm. And we have control of him for, I think, two years. Love, love that. <clears throat> where he won't, love that. Oh, my gosh. Where, where he won't be getting paid... As much as like a full on signing, he's getting arbitration for the next two years. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's, that's one, exciting. That's a perfect fit. That was, you know, I think from Preller's standpoint, that was like a must have. Like he had to be included in this deal, right? Um, and it fits exactly the need. So yeah, we we think he's going to get a real shot as a starter, and then yeah, like you said, three or four probably, mm-hmm. uh, depending on how things pan out. But that is Michael King. So welcome, San Diego. Um, we also got the other centerpiece. Of this trade was top prospect, um, I forget his first name, Thorpe. Michael Thorpe? I don't know. Is it Michael Thorpe? Now I feel bad because I don't remember his name. Thorpe! Anyways. <laughs> Thorpe. We'll learn. <laughs> hey, give us, it's been like less than 12 hours. So, Since it happened, yeah. Thorpe. Uh, right-handed pitcher. He's 23 years old. This is the kid we had talked about in the other um, other podcast, right? But he was the San Luis Obispo kid. But- Drew Thorpe. Drew Thorpe. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Michael King, Drew Thorpe, my lord. Drew Thorpe, welcome. Um, but yeah, dude, so 139 innings pitched in the minors last year. 14-2, and 2.59 ERA, sub one whip, which is That's unbelievable. Big time. And yeah. over 130 innings pitched. Mm-hmm. That is a workload. That yeah. is a priming you for a big league season yep. workload. He's projected, you said, for 2025. Yeah, correct. But with our current state... Dude, he might get a sign, shot. Sign Spring training will be very telling for him. Yeah. But wow, what a great first year. He won the minor league pitcher of the year award. Oh, did he? He did. Like um, Snelling. So hey, right. So he got both. That'd be pretty sweet. That's pretty. That's pretty yeah. cool. So a lot to be excited about with him. If he has another good developmental year, you know, we'll obviously see him in twenty twenty five. Yeah. And more excitingly, you might get a shot now, and you're going to yeah. get to see this kid come up and have an opportunity to be something great. And I think that's what we're hoping for out of this trade. I'm Mm -hmm. jumping a little far ahead here, but, you know, as long as we have some pitching that will stick around here and be solid for us, Mm -hmm. you already have your cornerstones locked down with Joe Musgrove and you Darvish. Yeah. 
if you can get a solid one or two guy out of to develop out of this batch, mm-hmm. the deal pays for itself to have yeah. a solid one, two, three mm-hmm. for the years to come, potentially in a four. Yeah, I love I love that. I and, like Thor. and like you said, I think we're gonna see a lot of him in spring training yep. for sure. So that'll be something to keep an eye out for. Faux show. Also, two. I'm dumb. I have their names up here on my notes. I just <laughs> in a different section. You are dumb. All right, we're two out of the five. Okay, so we've also got so there's two more pitchers involved. We've got Johnny Brito, also right-handed pitcher, and I'm gonna throw this out there. I'm getting hungry. Yeah, I was gonna say any of like the Mexican food vendors at Petco Park or surrounding area need to right now. Well, I guess maybe you can wait until he makes the team, or not. <laughs> but you need to make the Johnny Burrito. Love it. I'll eat it. <laughs> Johnny Burrito. You had me you at burrito. Yeah, can't not say. It. Just had to throw that out there. But anyways, let's get back to the good stuff. Um, so right, similar kind of hybrid role like King. Right, he pitched in 25 games last year. Uh, for the Yankees, started 13 games, nine and seven, four four eight ERA, one point two two WHIP, seven point two Ks per nine. Um, so about league average. You're getting yeah. like a league average pitcher, uh, only 25 years old, so still some development probably to come. But you know, just again makes kind of just makes sense for what the Padres need. Not only that, we're talking about being 25 years old and pitching in Yankee Stadium. Mm-hmm. You know, that's mm-hmm. not an easy debut place. They'll let you know when you're when you're garbage. And it's hitter friendly. It's hitter friendly. Yeah. So we're taking these guys who have made it to the big league level, which is nice. Yeah, <laughs> like right. like making Just, it and being yeah. able to having, not poop the bed your first time a taste. out. Yeah, yeah. And then they're coming to Peco Park, a notoriously more pitcher friendly ballpark. Mm-hmm. You know they have some. They have something under their belt. It's not nothing. They're not super green, nice. and it's exciting. I mean, those were league average numbers. And if he develops, you know, we're obviously not overpaying for him. Yeah. So hopefully Niebla can work some magic and mm-hmm. and develop mm-hmm. some of these young guys to be better than what they were. And we're paying at a low price, relative, right? right. I mean, we don't have Soto, but you're not getting a guy who has been in the league, putting up sub three ERA numbers for years that you would have inherently had to pay more for we're getting them early which is nice Mm -hmm. and controllable which is also nice yep next guy next guy so next up on the list is randy vasquez also right-handed pitcher also 25 years old um limited sample size on the bigs he pitched last year for the yanks in 11 games five starts six relief appearances 2.87 era 1.27 whip 7.9 k's per nine so like on paper very similar to Brito. Um, yeah. Again, probably just like another league average guy, but still some development to come. So, yeah. Too yeah. small of a sample size to be <clears throat> excited or discouraged. Right. But you're definitely not mad about it. Right. These are young guys that we're getting to hopefully develop and see turn into something. And that's a lot of pitchers to kind of roll the dice on. And we'll see what happens. I mean, I don't dislike any of them. Yeah. None of them I'm looking at going, why did? Why are we even taking a chance? This is silly. Right. Right, it's not like some, you know, Tommy John, single A, yeah. Tommy John, <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. And then the last piece of the puzzle, <clears throat> uh, Higgy, Kyle Higashioka, um, he caught seven years for the Yankees. These parts of the season didn't know that, um, but he's thirty three. We're talking defense first catcher uh, career. He hit two fifty three with six forty seven OPS. So you know, is what it is. Um, <laughs> But his biggest thing behind the plate is he's in the 90th percentile of pitch framing. Yeah, I love that. And you had a really good point before the show. I did. Uh, when I, was just, <laughs> I sure did have I sure a good did. point. Yeah, you're, you're right, uh, as all of mine are. Um, but when I was looking at this trade, I'm like, okay. At first, I looked at it and thought, good, we got a backup catcher. We were looking for a backup catcher. Campy, as in Camposano, is going to get to take the reins for the first year and have a yep. clear-cut opportunity to be the everyday catcher, which I'm very excited yeah. about. Yeah, exciting. So I was like, all right, cool. But then I started to think deeper, and I'm like, you know what? We're getting a lot of young pitchers from mm-hmm. this Yankee organization, mm-hmm. and they've pitched to him. Yep. You know, that is a going to be a, a face that they've seen before that gets to come with them to the clubhouse. He's going to be catching bullpens for them. Yep. It's going to be a face that's familiar and hopeful, hopefully comforting. To where that's the ad value. Yep. He's going to be able to ease them in, usher them in, and help them make this transition in a way that someone that they don't know just can't. Yeah. So, fun little pickup. Again, he's a throw in. Mm-hmm. We didn't overpay for him either. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah but I like it. There was, a, there was a question mark with the catching, you know, with, with Gary Sanchez leaving and mm-hmm. Nola also leaving. And 
-hmm. And Brett Sullivan just kind of, you know, being, being like Brett that Sullivan. four, like triple A, four A kind of guy. He's a four A guy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, just just made sense along with the deal. So my last question on the trade then is: so what's your overall take? Are you satisfied with the trade? Are you upset? How are you feeling? I think there are a lot of different takes that we've seen on social media. I disagree mm -hmm. with most of them <laughs> yeah, um, because it doesn't take into account the entire situation. This will not be long-winded, but it needs to be said. Soto and his tenure here, <clears throat> if you're a Padres fan and you're disappointed in it, that's fair. I mean, it is fair to be disappointed to see him go away because when we got him, you were expecting to see him play well from go. Yeah. You were expected the Padres to be in the playoffs every year he was here. Mm -hmm. You were expecting to potentially extend him. Yeah, Almost none of those things came to fruition. When he first got here, he struggled a little bit. Yeah. He became a bit rollover heavy. He was always good at getting on base with his walks. Yep. Towards the latter end of last year, he ended up putting up insane numbers and was hitting for power and being everything we wanted him to be. So we end last year, and we're feeling really good about having Soto. Yeah. He's a silver lining to our bad year. And then you're like, all right, we have him for one more year. And then you find out we can't afford him. We can't afford to keep them. We can't afford to extend them. So that puts us in this brand new situation that is so different than where we were when we got them. Yep. With that being said, if you're not going to extend them, if you don't think you're going to win a world, you better be sure that he's going to be the missing piece to a World Series run. Right. And I don't think that's the case. Like a for sure thing. Yes. And I don't think that's where we're at. <coughs> so what do you got to do? You got to find a way to get the most value you can waiting to the deadline. Yep. Not not smart. We're not going to get any money or anything for him for half a season. Yep. So getting rid of him now made sense. I understand why we had to do it. It's not fun to get rid of a guy yeah. like that because yeah, I know he's going to go to Yankee Stadium and oh he's going to ball dude. out. He's going to be he's great, gonna... and it's going to hurt to watch it because it's like, oh. It's actually you know. going to be fun to watch him because the judge. He'll get prime Stan time. gets yeah. better, and it's going to be kind of fun. It works out for the Yankees. <laughs> They're the Yankee fan base has every right to be excited. Um yep. But for us, it kind of sucks. That part stings. But we did get a good return. I mean, mm -hmm. we addressed a lot of needs in the sense of pitching. Obviously, we're in dire need for that right now. Yep. And it also addressed some of the future needs as well because these are young guys. Right. I like that they didn't try right. and go out and get a slightly above league average pitcher who's established veteran on their staff yep. and sacrifice not getting some extra pieces for the future. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy with what we got. There's upside. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, if even one of them, becomes a dude, yeah. like a bona fide dude, right. and you have you Darvish, Joe Musgrove, and player and to be dude named, number and three. dude number three, <laughs> that makes it all worth it, because one year of Soto production is not worth having yeah. two to five years of production out of a pitcher that we got in this trade. Right. Yeah. I think that's that's good, my take. I think, I think that's a good take, and I agree, because I think my first, I think overall, when I first saw the trade, I was a little bit disappointed. But then, right, but then I did the research. Like we yeah. said, like, you know, I'm used to when I see all these trades, it's like, oh, you know, they threw in like a single A pitcher with three Tommy John surgeries. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's not the case, right? Like mm -hmm. you said, these guys are all big league ready, mm -hmm. you know, and, and have potential high upside. So it's like, okay, like you said, one of those four, like there's a good shot that they're, one of those four guys is going to be like a legitimate big league pitcher. So that that in itself is exciting. And then, right, we already talked about Higgy. I would say, like, still, like, the one thing I would still say is, like, it would have been nice to get maybe an outfield piece, especially since you're shipping two away. Two. It would have been nice to get at least one. Yeah. But I know it, it seemed – and it's funny, right, because the Yankees' top three prospects are all outfielders and um, good ones at that. But it, it I'm sure they probably had one of those names, right? It's, like, Spencer Jones, mm -hmm. Dominguez, and – Pereira, I think, are the mm -hmm. top three, right? And it's like, I'm sure Preller tried to get one of those three guys, and I'm sure the Yankees are like, untouchable. <laughs> yeah, not, not happening. I yeah. think the other part, too, where the fan base is a little frustrated is like, okay, so we got all these young pitchers that may mm -hmm. work out. It doesn't completely solve our pitching need right now. Yeah. And it creates a need in the outfield because now yeah. we need to go find outfielders. Yeah. So it just there's no part of it that feels like you can be like, Oh, thank God that was solved. Mm -hmm. Nope. It created more ambiguity of what this roster is going to look like. Yeah. But when all is said and done, I think we'll look back at this training and go, thank God that happened because yeah. now we have so-and-so. Right. And it's just I kind of shifting the levels, right? It's like outfield was in a decent spot. Pitching was in a bad spot. And now it's just like, whoop. Yep. Both need a, a little bit more attention. Yeah. Um, and it'll be fun. I yeah. think it's going to be fun to see Preller reconstruct this team. It's his last chance to do so. Yeah. I mean, this is his... 
his go. Like mm-hmm. he needs to make things right, right the ship. And he's not a bad GM. It's going to take him putting on his big boy pants and figuring this out. Yeah. But I'm excited to see the new product that will be on the field. Yeah. It's sad to see Soto go though. It not is. fun. It is. Right. We can all agree that any team is better off with Juan Soto. But again, with the value situation. It's not about one year it's, for yeah, us. Exactly. It's not about one year exactly. anymore. And they got burned already. Yeah. I mean, look at Snell and Hayter. Mm-hmm. Had they decided to trade at the trade deadline, yeah. imagine what they could have gotten. A lot. Right. I mean, legitimately a lot. Mm-hmm. Snell was the best starting pitching option on the block, yeah. and Hayter was the best relief pitcher on mm-hmm. the block. They could have taken... So much from a team, uh, and they didn't. Yeah. So now you have the same situation coming up where you've got Soto, and you cannot afford to yeah. let Snell, Soto, and Hater all go for nothing. They're just going to walk away, and you got nothing to show for it. So I yeah. think that also played a part in Soto right. uh, so being shipped let off. Those two guys go. So <laughs> let's get something. Fool me here. once, fool me twice, um, fool me three times. <laughs> so, anyways, let's let's use this. I think this actually it makes sense, right? So we just talked about Soto trade and the intricacies of that, and we touched upon how right there's still a lot of areas that need to be filled. Yeah. So let's talk about a little bit about potential free agents that okay. could you know help fill in these gaps, right? So we can we can start with the starting pitching since that one obviously is most impacted here by that trade, right? So at this point we can probably say that at least okay, Give me so we've got, so we've got <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good one. He's not gonna pitch till yeah, twenty five anyway. But anyways. We can't afford him. So right, we've got let's let's talk about the starting rotation. We've got two, you know, I guess you'd call them franchise guys, right? And Darvish and Musgrove. Hopefully they can Based be healthy. Based on the contracts. Yeah, exactly. Um, but if those guys are healthy, you kind of know what you're getting. You're mm-hmm. getting two quality MLB starters like that. Uh, we're hoping Michael King or someone from this trade will be that 3-4 guy. Mm-hmm. We've got a couple other internal ones. I know you've brought up Morihone a couple times. Morihone the dude's will get got, a shot. He's got good stuff, but just hasn't put it together in MLB yet. Um, Waldron had a surprisingly good mm-hmm. end to last season. That's the knuckleballer. Um, so hopefully he leans into that knuckleball. Um, so right, like a couple internal options, right? Like, <laughs> again, I don't know if, you know, they might be a serviceable five. I would love to see like one more like quality MLB starter, you know? Yeah. I think that would give us really good options. And so I'm going to sign I've another got a, starter. I've got a couple written down here. Are there any, any top of mind for you that you'd Fire like to see? Fire away. I'm, I'm going to chime in. All right. So we talked about, I had mentioned these a little bit before, but and we'll talk about our new manager, Mike Schilt, in a little bit. But there's uh, Jack Flaherty still on the market. He mm-hmm. pitched for Schilt in um, St. Louis. I don't know how expensive he's going to be, but he kind of had a last kind of a rough last couple of years mm-hmm. plus injuries. So it might be a decent pickup. Um, Ryu is on the market. I don't know. That's a little bit weird. But he is he's a good dude. He's a good pitcher, man. Like he always performs. He's older now, too. But I'm just saying you could get good value out of him um there's my actually my top one one of my top free agent and i'm like come on make the deal is uh imanaga the left-handed japanese pitcher yeah I'm that's who it. i want we're on the same page that's who i want i want that guy give me give me some shota shota <laughs> give me some show it's shota time <laughs> <laughs> get rid of soto get shota out of no that's my guy he's his 30 year old Left-handed pitcher. He 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 started the game in the World Baseball Classic um, for Japan when they took down the USA for the championship. Dude's a stud and kind of flying under the radar because Yamamoto's yeah. stealing the show. So give me some Shota. That would be sick. Um, but anyway, those are those are like kind of the names. Yeah. Dakota Hudson was another one I had wrote down, but I don't know. It's not like not super exciting. I mean, let's let's possible. be real. The, the market isn't that great for what we're looking for. Yeah. Um. But we'll see. I mean, it really could be a chance. We we let Morihone fly under the radar right now. It's true. The guy has stuff. And I hate that term because stuff is undefined and often a huge variable. Well, the dude throws effortless 99. Yeah. He's a guy where once it clicks, it could be game over. Like, mm-hmm. that could be your guy. Yeah. Because he has, quote, unquote, stuff. Stuff. Um, I want to see him perform this year. That's my top pick for the number five spot. The number Morihone. five spot. Give me Morihone. Okay. A, a Morihone that has figured it out. I like that. And I can totally picture him, if he gets that spot from go mm-hmm. and can pitch three times through the rotation without losing said spot, yeah. it's going to be a big year for him, mm-hmm. developmentally, psychologically, yeah, and hopefully mm-hmm. within the results. Got it. Yeah, so we'll see. I, I'm sure they'll sign somebody. They have to. 
they have to, and hopefully that comes up relatively soon and creates a really interesting storyline for spring training, right? Like spring you're training about, is a you're fight. talking about three starting spots available. You want to know who benefits from this? And this is going to sound really weird uh, to people who might not play the game. When you have three spots open, if you've got a guy who maybe has some really good ability, but maybe not isn't the strongest up here. <clears throat> yeah. If he's fighting for one spot mm-hmm. and he feels someone else is beating him out and he crumbles under that pressure yeah. and, and goes, it's, I'm not going to get it. Mm-hmm. It's gone. Now you've got three spots. Mm-hmm. That, get, that same player is going to have the confidence of continuing to fight for a spot and might get more out of himself than he would yeah. have otherwise. It's a weird psychological it's a, it's thing. It's a competition, you know? And it is um, competition. Well, and here's another interesting one, because I remember, you know, especially on, like, junior college level, when you you kind of have to compete for the spot, even if they tell you you're the guy, you're still competing. Yeah. Um, and so something that I kind of drawing a parallel to, right, is say there's one spot open, which is not... I guess this is, it's been a situation that's happened in the past with the Padres, but mm-hmm. I don't remember the exact year. But, right, like, say there's one spot, but then you have, like, a clear front runner, or mm-hmm. you have a clear two guys and then so if you're like number three number four Mm -hmm. guy at spring training you're like well i'm not going to make it anyway so not to say that they're not motivated but you know there's a psychological effect that goes into your mind when you're like it's right there i can get it or right and that's the thing about this year is that there's three spots exactly about so even if you are number four on the depth chart potentially going to spring training you're one away from getting make it in there you know what i mean and so there's going to be that fight and right it's like well, it seems like Michael King might be that third spot, but still, it's not a for sure thing. No. You like nothing's for sure in this game, um, so I think it's really interesting. It has made a very a fun guys. situation. I mean, yeah. it's one that you don't see. It's very rare that a uh, MLB staff is looking to fill three spots. <laughs> yeah, They're completely up yeah. for grabs. Right, that's so rare. It is. I don't know if I've seen that. I've never seen a team yeah, it's, it's out of their five man rotation have three empty yeah. slots. Very interesting. Yeah, it'll be fun. So yeah, we'll look, training's going to be awesome to watch. We'll look forward to it. Um, but let's let's keep rolling outfield. here. Uh, outfield. Okay. A new void in the outfield. Yes. Because now we gone. got our left fielder and our center fielder gone. We got a platinum Glover, Glover, Glover right. in right field. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, as far as solutions here, I think I'm big on Jung Hoo Lee. Mm-hmm. That's the Korean um, outfielder. He's even been. Uh, quoted on the record saying that he would love the opportunity to play with his his guy Ha Sung Kim. I'm for it. I love that. And his profile is similar to like a Stephen Kwan. They said similar to a lot of people are throwing out Ender Inciarte, which is just a super random comparison. It is. Who had like a good couple of years but hasn't played. Anyways, um, <laughs> so I was like, that's a really weird comp. But but yeah, contact guy, good defensive guy, affordable. Yeah, and think about this too, right? Ha Sung Kim, big deal coming out of Korea. Took him two and a half years to figure it out. You know what I mean? Um, so it's like maybe that happens for Lee. Apparently he's got better contact stuff, with, which might play a little bit better in MLB. But also, right, if he is paired up with Ha Sung Kim, how big is that to have that pre-established relationship? And he could probably help him ramp oh, up, right? Like here's all said. the things I've learned in the, my first three years here. I wish someone told me this when I started. Exactly. Right. You know, having the similar language. Oh, it yeah. would just it makes perfect sense for San Diego yeah. and potentially um, for the players. So I love that. I hope we're able to make a deal with him as well. Yep. Um, you had brought up Adam Duvall in the last episode. I Adam still think Duvall. it's a decent pickup. It is a decent pickup. You know? it's, it's a roll of the dice because you don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes he goes on these heaters where it's like, is this all star caliber Duvall? He's been an all star. And then it goes into like, oh my God, can he hit the ball? <laughs> striking out like crazy. Um, I do remember he's, uh, I think I remember seeing he's much more effective against lefties. So it's like possible platoon. And he's also like gold glove outfielder. I, I would like to have him because he plays too. solid defense. He has pop, which is something the Padres need to <clears throat> replenish because yeah. you're losing Soto. Right. Um, we don't have a first baseman that hits for power. Mm, yeah, that's that's another one. So we'll having Duvall we'll makes about. some sense too. That would be nice if he's not crazy expensive. Yep. Um, beyond that, I thought you had an even better take where it's like, who do we have in the wings? Oh, yeah. Just trying to get to the mm-hmm. big league level. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I was telling Brandon this before the show, but if if my name was Jackson Merrill right now, I am picking up the phone, calling my glove rep, whatever, Rawlings, whatever he wears, and I'm like, <laughs> hook a brother up with an outfield glove today because I'm, I'm out there taking fly balls today. Yeah, um, because similar to the we said with the pitching staff, 
an outfield spot, barring some, you know, bunch of free agent signings, is up for grabs. Two? Yeah, two spots. You know what I mean? And we saw, I mean, Tatis just proved it. Like, if you're an athlete, put me out in one of the corner outfields and I'll get it done. You know what I mean? And no disrespect to corner outfield. You would know better than me. I played corner outfield. Yeah. Uh, It's harder than people think. But yeah, it's. (laughs) But it's not shortstop. If you're an athlete, you know, it's not shortstop. The dude's an athlete. And uh, there's a log jam in the infield, and yeah. it might be his best shot to come up and play sooner. And yeah. I think that's every player's dream is to get to the bigs by right. any means necessary. So this might be well, those means. Especially, too, right, with a loaded infield, right? Like, where would he even play on the infield? First that's what I'm saying. Log jam. Right. Kim, Cronenworth, Bogarts, Machado. Rosario. And then, yeah, Machado will probably be DH to start the year, but with his elbow. Yeah. But still, right, like, that's a that's a crowded infield. Hey, Rosario. Yeah. Might be a breakout year for him, too. He right? had some problems. He's going to get an opportunity, I think, right? Because Machado, like I said, I, my prediction, don't rush him back into it. There's kind of no need to. Just DH you know what you might see, actually? First base, Machado? No. Is that too Well, is that if too Machado's going to DH early in the year, you might see Kim go play third and Jackson Merrill get a shot at second. second. Oh, that's true. What about? I wonder if Eggie can play first base. We'll see. This is a lot That's of fun. Interesting. I mean, There's it, so many moving pieces there. You this could, year you is going to be so fun to watch because it's going to be the year of opportunity for younger guys. It's not going to be as many big names because yeah. you're not going to have your Soto yeah. and some of the other bigger, like even a Josh Bell, mm-hmm. like these names that you've heard in the league for a long time. Yeah. But you're going to get to start to see some of the prospects that you've been hearing about for a couple of years now in the Padres organization come up finally because mm-hmm. we've actually been deprived yeah. of prospect talent coming up. These last couple of years, if there's one thing we haven't had, mm-hmm. is the prospects come up and do a, do something of noteworthiness. Yeah, I don't know. For I don't sure. know how to say that, but For yeah, sure. we've always been about getting the big name. Yep, and they've been coming in, and it's gonna I, be a different type of Padre team. Here's here's an interesting. Well, I have the list of free agent outfielders. I, I hope he hasn't signed yet. It's gonna look like a kook, but I don't think he has. <laughs> um, this is an interesting one. What would you say to a Jock Peterson pickup? You're getting a left-handed bat. He Power. plays first base. Does play first base. And can play corner outfield. Don't hate it, other than the fact that he's a former Dodger and Giant. Well, he's just making his rounds in the NL West. <laughs> <laughs> also just seems, yeah, I'm not going down that road. Yeah, it makes sense. I'll, I'll, like, I'll give it, you that. It, it makes sense. It, it could it But could he's also work. expensive, right? I don't know. It's got to be. Not sure. Not sure what the market is for him. But uh, I just I saw that on the list. I wanted to put it out there. But anyways, we could go all day, but I think those... Or just a couple, you know, names and or ideas that kind of made sense to me. Yeah. Um, Next thing, though. Yeah. Another big thing. New manager. We've got a of new course. manager. Of course. Mike. Mikey Schilt. <laughs> you heard your name with that last name. Hurt, yeah. Hurt puns incoming. Name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, interesting. Really interesting story. You know, I was reading more about it. We touched upon him real quick in... In our first off-season podcast, but you know now that now that's official, mm-hmm. we want to do a little bit more research. Um, really interesting that he never played professional baseball at any I level. Couldn't believe that when I and heard it. I think he they were even saying he played like he was like a bench guy in college. Yeah, he was <laughs> like a subpar college, college player. Guy. Um, but one of the I think it's almost like kind of charming about him though is the first like, interview that he had with um, Don Orsillo, I mm-hmm. think. You know, they like talked about that, and I think he's it's like single digits as far as like guys who have managed a big league team with zero professional experience, and so he's one of those guys. Um, and I thought it was it was just really interesting because he was one of those guys who was he was he he said in the interview he was hundred percent content with his life when he was like, oh my god, I get to manage the single A team, yeah. like my life goal has been achieved. Yeah. Like, I can't believe it. I'm good it. here. You just and leave he just here. was so happy and he loved it. And he just, apparently he just is a really great kind of players coach, it sounds like. And he just... A servant of the just organization. Just kept going. And he just kept going up because everybody loves him. Except, yeah. for, except for the Cardinal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to piggyback on that. And I think there's something really nuanced about the dynamic, yeah. right? So whenever you've played pro ball, yeah. whenever you've done anything before and you're coaching or mentoring someone who's done it you have this sense of well this is what i did to be successful yeah it, it, some people might say you ought to do it too mm-hmm. or they're comparing and contrasting against each other like manny machado be like well i was better than you when you were a pro why would i listen to how you <laughs> did it whatever it may be and that's not yeah. how many talks I, yeah, I, i'm not I putting no, many but, but there, a there player can have that, that dynamic for sure, for sure whereas this guy is so far removed from that like mm-hmm. so far, he is. He right. never even played pro. Probably, He's not trying to stand on yeah. anything and tell you I did it this way 
you better listen to me. It's very much a collaborative experience that he's describing. He's saying that he wants to go in there and his job is to be hold people accountable. Yeah. That's what he's about. And he yeah. wants to make a plan. Yep. And he said, I have my non-negotiables. There are ways that we will play mm -hmm. that need to be this way. Mm -hmm. But he also made a huge point in, I'm going to talk with these players, see what their goals are, see mm -hmm. what they want to be held accountable on. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it together. And then it's my job yeah. to keep them on it, which is beautiful. Yeah, very, very two-way street kind of thing, which exactly. which I loved as a player. And like that was my favorite, like, you know, just the the relationship that I had with my, I guess, favorite coaches yeah. was very two-way streety as well. And it was a very similar situation to what you just described, right? It's like exactly. here's the like, these are my rules, yeah. but I know that each player is unique and specific and 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 to have that trust factor that you know you've been around the game for a long time obviously to get to a college level to get to a professional level like you know what you're doing to an extent yeah, right there's and some trust done, that should be inherently there homework, yeah you know um so you don't want to take that away from, like the individuality part you yeah. know you want to hear a hot take what you got so <clears> as <throat> i was listening to that don arcello schilt interview yeah i think i might have caught on to something mm -hmm. so if you don't know, Schultz has been in the organization with us for the last two years. Mm -hmm. He knows the ins and outs. He knows what happened last year with any drama mm -hmm. within that clubhouse, within the front office. And when he talked about creating these plans with the players, he goes, I'm going to be talking to the players and offering that they come to me and lay out this plan. And mm -hmm. he goes, and I, I've got a pretty good feeling they're going to take me up on that. Meaning, potentially, with Bob Melvin... There wasn't as good of a back and forth between the player ideas being heard by management mm. and being implemented the way that they would like to have seen it. Mm. It might have been more of a one way street mm. because it sounded like Schilt had noticed Something. that didn't exist and they wanted it. Interesting. So it, huh. I could be reading into some very thin lines, but as someone who sits back and does a lot of reading of people, yeah, I think that's something. And it could be a very big positive. Interesting. And he's a big development guy. He's been around player development. He's been around our minor league guys, yeah. which is huge because yeah. they're going to be coming up, mm -hmm. and he's going to usher them into the world of baseball at the highest level. Yeah. And I like him more now that I've gotten to do more research on him. Yeah. It. I still think that he will be uh, Preller's guy as far as like what Preller says goes, but you know, hopefully it works. Yeah. Who's to say it, it can't work? Right. And hopefully it's a match made in heaven and. And we're happy Padre fans winning lots of ball games this year and seeing some prospects come up and flourish. Yeah. I think another There's really, my bow. <laughs> another couple I got a couple other cool notes here, but I saw an article was posted too that um he's making his rounds to go meet individually in person with yes. all the different um, you know, at least guys who are locked up for a long time. Um so he's well, actually, he was heading I'm going to, to go see Soto, yeah. but that might not happen anymore. Um, but then he's flying out to see Tatis in uh, Dominican Republic. Then he's heading to Aruba to uh, go soak up the sun <laughs> a little bit with the uh, with Bogarts. And he's taking a cruise over to Korea. No, I made I made that last one up. But how cool, right? Like <laughs> but, these are uh, things but that it, are lasting first, first impressions. Real. Like. Right. Could it be any better? Yeah. What a great idea! No. And and he's not the first one to do this. No, managers have done. I'm this. sure it's yeah, it's relatively. But it doesn't Comment. change the fact that if you're the player, you don't appreciate it. Sure. Yeah. Why it's not? awesome. But uh, just a good way to start the relationship, right? And again, it's not even starting a relationship. Starting the new managerial relationship is, is how I'll put it there. Um, doesn't hurt. You want a sidebar? What's up? <laughs> There's something that every free agent signing a new manager has to do that I think is so silly. When they get announced and the new manager of mm -hmm. the San Diego Padres. Yeah. Silt. They give them this jersey. Oh, yeah. And they have to button this jersey always, in one of their most nervous off. moments. And I'm just like, <laughs> can can we just not? Like, let them have it untucked or, yeah. like, just completely take that part out of it. Yeah. We don't need to it's see like them button 30 it. 30 second I know for me, silence my hands would be shaking, bro. Right? Like, it's I've had trouble stuff. putting on buttons before a game with not a bunch of cameras <laughs> and questions to answer. But, yeah, I've always seen that, and I just that's think funny. it's hilarious. That's a good. That's good. That's funny. Um, uh, other couple <laughs> notes real quick. Um, so he did manage with the Cardinals, as mm -hmm. I mentioned before. Uh, he, he managed for three and a half seasons with the Cardinals. He took over as interim manager when they got rid of Matheny, I think it was. Mm -hmm. 252 and 199 was his record 
Solid. 0.559 winning record. Solid. Um, his first full year, 2019, he got his club to the championship series mm -hmm. uh, where they lost to Juan Soto and company. Mm -hmm. Funny enough. When the they won National. the World Series. Yep. And, uh, and then in 2020 and 2021... Uh, made wild card appearances, so at least made it to the playoffs. So no stranger to the yeah, postseason. Every single year where it was under his reign, they made playoff appearances. And they said, "Get out of here." And here's a couple other interesting ones too, right? Um, yeah, they did say, "Get out of here," which <laughs> who knows? I, apparently, there's philosophical differences, and it's like on his side, he's like, "What? Do you not want to play in the postseason?" Or well, what? the other part too is like he spent so much time in that organization. Like, yeah. what could it have been? I crazy. Anyways, I happy guess to they have liked. How Marmol ran the team last year, I guess. Is how they like it. Yikes. <laughs> okay, I'm not getting bang, into bang, that bang. one. Yeah, no. <laughs> Anyways, fine. that's that's besides the point. We're a Padres podcast. Um, so here's some interesting stuff. So his philosophies, as far as what the internet says, is that he focuses a lot on defense and base running, which have been like two metrics, apparently, that they say does play a big factor on winning games, right? And so, get this. He... Took the team that was, it looks like they were previously, what was it, like ranked 29th in defense before he got there. And they got them to the best defense, including like more gold gloves than like any team under one manager in, I think, history, which is pretty insane. Because if I thought about one thing the Padres sucked at, <laughs> it was defense and base well, running. Guess what, oh, though? wait. He's been here for two years. Yeah, maybe he has a place. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, I mean, I'm just saying. Hey, I'm like, about defense. That's and what base he's, he's all about. I'm all so I'm sure it. when you were talking about like what are his non-negotiables, I'm just saying that could possibly be the I, things he focuses on. I think accountability sure. and fundamentals goes a long way in pushing across a run and extra innings. So maybe that will also help. You know? No, it's true. So, anyways, interesting. I think you know it was the right pick. Uh, interesting to see how he fills out the rest of the coaching staff. I think. Yeah. Because uh, Bob Nubella's took everybody around. <laughs> uh, they had, like, apparently I was reading they had, like, three different guys in charge of hitting, including Flaherty, who who walked on being mm -hmm. bench coach, and now is the bench coach of the Cubs. Mm -hmm. Take that for what it is. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We need, like, a third base coach. We need potentially a main hitting coach yeah. and a bench coach. So we'll see who he brings in. Um, I'm going to say this know. one more time. This is exciting. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, after a year of such disappointment. We're getting a completely new product on the field. We don't know if it's going to be better or worse. Yep. I hope better. Yeah. But like, oh my gosh. As someone who loves new things, me, it's as new as it gets. It's yep. going to be fun. It is. I'm so excited to watch spring training. I cannot wait for it to get here. Mm -hmm. I want to see the fruit of the labor of A.J. Preller when yeah. all is said and done, what he puts yeah. out there. Right. I know I smack-talked him a little bit last time, but, you know, this is an opportunity for him, too, to yeah. really show what he can do. And I'm excited. I think he's capable. Yeah. I've never not thought he's not capable. Mm -hmm. He's made some bad moves. But now it's time to shine. Right. Be the rock star GM. But make more good moves than you do bad moves. You're allowed to make bad moves. Just don't make it every Repeatedly. Time. Yeah, just don't make it a habit. The contracts are the biggest one. Yeah. Anyways, we're not diving down that <laughs> rabbit hole. Good luck, AJ. Excited to see what he does yeah. the rest of this winter. And then we'll enjoy spring and see what happens. Yeah. And then I think... Last note, you know, we got to say, I just want to say, you know, Peter Seidler, really tough one to swallow there. He will be missed. Talk about, we talked about it before, like what, you know, just such a likable owner, you know, great relationship. Like, I think it's it's well documented how close he was with Machado and, and like Darvish, for example. Like, those are just two guys, but I'm sure it's even more. Um, and, you know, just a, a little added, I think, motivation for the squad today. It'll be fun to rally around Seidler. Um, he did so much more outside of the world of baseball for San yeah. Diego. The community was very active in, yeah. in the homeless uh, mm -hmm. situation that we have going on there. And on top of that, a guy that always put his money where his mouth was, big time. He said, Machado's my priority. We're mm -hmm. going to re-sign Machado. He did it, and he did it big time. And he's obviously put a little ton of money into putting out a great product yep. that experienced the most sellouts ever. Yep. He was clearly passionate about yeah, it. Yeah, just a true Padre fan. A Padre yeah, fan. And through. yeah, it, it hit me harder than I thought it would when he did pass. Yeah. It did seem sudden. And it also seemed to make sense as to why we were making <laughs> such hard pushes at the end of yeah, last year. Right. Um, but our best wishes to the Seidler family. 
and I'm I know that all the Padre players who were affected by him are going to rally around him this year. They'll have a patch, I'm sure, yep. uh, as a daily reminder. Which sounds silly, but it really does. Yeah. You know, you put that uniform on every day, and when you see something every day, it stays in your head, which we want yeah. um, out of Sadler. So best of luck yeah, just, to the Padres, and thank you, right? Like just big time thanks to he, Sadler. He, he allowed San Diego baseball. I mean, we've seen the city, like you said, the sellouts, the the playoff atmosphere. Like we haven't seen that in forever. We haven't seen a product like that yeah. because they wouldn't spend money in yeah. the past, and so, he really made it happen. Just it's a thank you, and yeah, and it's and it's a legacy that will not be forgotten uh, anytime soon. Tip of the cap. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think that wraps it up. If there's any other big, big news that comes out from this offseason, we'll probably hop on to another offseason episode, but that wraps it up for this episode. Go Pods. Go Pods. Thanks for watching. See ya.